Welcome back, guys. Um, going to work on some reactor stuff today. And this I'm not going to use. XAR brought me that. Um, but we're going to process up this uranonite. And uranium. And you can use uranonite, uranium, pitch blend. Any of that will get you uranium. And you can either get it in the IC2 like this by cooking it, I think. Actually, I got this from uh, making blocks and then breaking the blocks down. Um, or you'll get the regular ingot look like this. Now, currently, Greg doesn't have ways of using this or thorium. We only have the basic rods that come with uh, IC2. And I've built a basic reactor, the E reactor. It's hidden inside this granite block right here. And I was testing out a minute ago to see if this would work. And you can use the ports like this. Now, these are regular uranium th fuel rods, which are uranium and uranium-235 nuggets. You basically take six of these and three of these and you put these like this and these like this and now it'll make your rich nuclear fuel now you got to make sure you got your suit on if you don't have your suit on you will get hurt Uh, da, 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 da. I need some iron, and we're going to make a fuel rod. I do believe it's one piece of iron to make it. Get over here away from that noisy ass thing. Let's see. extruding one iron plate. That got it. Wire on my keyboards. Shorten out. I'm going to have to get me a new keyboard. Every now and then it messes up so I'm not going to be able to go anywhere near lava or anything until I switch keyboards I got another one I'll probably switch to because this is getting pretty bad it wasn't acting up too bad until just a little bit ago and now it's really getting to where it's kicking on and off constantly figures as soon as I go to try to record it's gonna act up Murphy's Law, you know, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. This thing don't quit on my Steel Junior's keyboard. Alright, now we're going to put... Alright, now why is this doing this again? I had this happen once before. Where you can't grab things out of your inventory. Alright. 
right now I can grab it. All right, I'll put this on canning. And then that will make us our uranium fuel rod. Now, another important thing you're going to need is vents, uh, reactor heat vents. Now, I don't need to make those because I've already made a whole bunch up from when I had this at spawn. Now, uh, unfortunately, again, we don't have Greg's recipes in, which actually make these easier. Um, Greg's heat vents uses aluminum instead of, um, let me hit R. Instead of having the iron plates, you can have aluminum plates, and there is an electric motor in the middle. But, We'll deal with it. They're not too hard to make. We're not going to use any expensive ones right now, like the advanced ones. Now, um, I might get, see if I can get Axel to come on and help us with a more advanced kind of tutorial for this kind of stuff because he knows a lot more about reactors than I do. I make very simple reactors that will do the job and that's it. He builds great big crazy reactors. Now turn this on. And if you hover over them and you see the numbers changing dramatically, then that component is taking too much heat. Where that one's at 9.99 and then goes down. Oh, see, it's taking durability, but it's going back, so it should be okay. It should not. Uh, go out but we might have to work on that this one is getting way too low at times this one's okay see this one this one will end up crashing out so we have to get another one of these heat exchangers and see we're taking core temperature that means we're not displacing enough of the heat from the reactor through the heat vents so the core is actually heating up now if you're using mox fuel you actually want core temperature to be higher because you get more power from it these I'm not sure I've never really messed with the uraniums that much I normally only use mox fuels but these last a lot longer but you'll see we're putting out 35 EU a tick with three rods now we could what I normally would start with would be one just like that and that would give you five now when you put the second one in there it will double what each of them puts out so that would be 10 and 10 so you get 20 and then you put this one in and that's what takes you to the 35 which is I'm trying to remember exactly how that's calculated. There, It's on the wiki exactly how it's calculated. Again, I'm not one that usually does the math on these types of things to try to figure them out. I just put them in, see what happens. 
Um, but I know it like multiplies the original one. None of this is working in my head on how that would work. And I don't have another heat exchanger. So we're going to have to look up how to make those. Heat exchanger. We need electric circuit, copper plates, and tin plates. It's not too difficult. You go through a lot of tin and a lot of copper when you start working with these. Now, XAR says he has some more of these uh, casings here. And he's going to bring them over to me so I don't have to remake them from when I melted mine down. So when he brings them over, I'll set up a fluid one, which I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick. Um, when you use the fluid one, you need reactor coolant. And to make that, you go to the enrich. You put in lapis dust, and that will make you your coolant. I think you get one, yeah, you get one per, and you'll want at least eight or sixteen to start. If you're doing a basic reactor with just a few cells in it, only trying to put out a, about 100 heat, you're going to want at least 8 to 16. And getting uh, lapis dust isn't too hard. If you can find a lapis vein, you'll have tons of it. But if you just go mining down around... I think it's 30 or below. You'll get all kinds of lapis dust, too. Uh, da -da -da -da. What was I looking for? Oh, yeah. Copper plates. Need five of them. And we need exactly three tin plates. And then we need a circuit. So we'll need that. And we'll need two of these. And we're going to need some copper. Actually, you know what? I might have the wires. Yes, I do. Look at that. So, put this here. He's here. There. Now, that placement I have of my reactor is not the best because I got it really close to a lot of my other things. And if something would happen and it would go critical, I would end up blowing up a lot of stuff but I'm not gonna leave this run this is gonna be for when I need extra power quickly or I will sit and watch it run a full cycle of rods through before I leave it so I know it's a good stable um, design. You can also find a lot of good stable designs on the wiki. Just go to the Greg Tech um, 
forum and go to the ICT forums and there's a whole industrial reactor setup thing where you can look at designs that other people have made. This one is probably going to be pretty stable like this. I do believe I've ran them like this before. So this should be okay. We're still pulling in some core temp. So we're still not displacing all of it. I can't remember if this works or not. Looks like it might. I'll put these in here. Now see, now this would be good if we were going to put a mox in here. Take these out and just let it build core temp little by little but we don't want core temp for regular uranium I don't think and you gotta be careful on the core temp the when you're running the mox fuel the higher the core temp is the better it will give you for your output but if you get above like 70%, you'll start taking heat damage when you get close to it. And if you get above 80, I think, it starts catching things on fire. And see, we're still pulling more temp. So, yeah, see, this one's taking too much durability damage so we're definitely going to have to either upgrade this one to a uh, diamond one one of these or I think these are the ones that will actually pull from the core temperature I'm not positive though again you know look on the wiki you'll find all kinds of designs on there I actually usually run my reactors in let's see do, 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 do. Move this stuff around here a little bit I usually run kind of this type of design here because you don't need the the heat exchangers. There we go. And we get five extra EU for having the extra one in there. But that's usually how I run mine. These wouldn't be in here at all. These would be out. And I do believe these should all stay right at 9.99 or the 9.9960. They shouldn't take any durability, and we shouldn't get any extra core temp like this. So if you're just needing a small amount of EU, this is a decent way of doing it. And you can always add another two over here. Um, you might even be able to pull this one up, this one over, put another one here and another one here. But it's a nice little design. It pulls you 40 EU a tick. And I do believe that's completely stable like that. Now, again, you know, Axel will run things that have a bunch of these in it. You can make dual and quad uh, fuel rods. Uh, 
Ugh, keyboard, stop it. Fuel rod empty. Okay. So this is your dual fuel rod. This is the MOX fuel. It's just two rods with an iron plate. And then this is the dual uranium, which is the same thing, just different. And then quads. You have three iron plates, two copper plates, and then your four rods. They work the same way as the regular ones. The only difference is they work like you have two, like what we're running over there, but in the same space. So it allows you to get more rods into a reactor to be able to pull more power. It's a space saver, basically. Um, but when you start running a lot of those, then you've got to get the, uh, the really advanced heat exchangers and stuff like that. Go ahead and show you real quick how to make the um, MOX fuel cell. Well, I'll show you how to make the MOX fuel. I think I got a little bit more. Oh, nope, I only got four. Um, basically, it's plutonium and uranium. Same thing as the other one. All right. Now, let's get to this. Now, for most things you've heard me talk about, when I process them, I just throw them in here. Um, this here, I will hand wash. The reason being, if you go into the ore washing, you will get lead. And then if you take this and you put it in the thermal centrifuge, you will get a tiny plutonium. But if you look at... Uh, crap. The sifting of sand or gravel uranium you'll see that you get a chance of lead dust plutonium and thorium and when you do this one it might be both you actually have a chance of getting the don't look at this one the uranium 235 now, if you're just wanting plutonium, or, uh, plutonium to make MOX rods, then putting it through the centrifuge will be your best bet. Because I've done seven of them already. I've only gotten two plutonium and a lead. But I should get... Um, and there's the thorium. It might actually be the your, the wash stuff that gives you the 235. I don't remember. It's been a while since I washed this stuff. But see, I got a little bit of plutonium out of it, and I should have gotten all lead. Now, again, I did 16, and I only got 6 seven things out of it so for nine of them i got nothing now we'll try the uraninite and let's see i'll put this up here now we know we had that 
See, there we go. Now we got a uranium nugget, a uranium-235 nugget, and a uranium-235 dust. So I guess the uraninite is going to be better for getting the 235. Now let's look and see if we wash this. Yeah, see, you're going to get thorium and regular uranium. And that's not what we want. We want the uranium-235. And see, the sifter shows up this. So I guess that's a little bit different. I guess it's best to just throw it in here and see what you get. That's the way I've been judging what it gives me. I wish he'd add a uh, thing like he did before that actually just gave the byproducts that you could get off of it. Let's see, we got two nuggets and three uh, tiny dust, and then we got three dust and one nugget of regular uranium, too. So... Then all you got to do is throw this back in here. Let it run again. And then you can hand wash that dust. And then you can take the dust that you get out of it. Throw it in your crucible. And cook it up into your uranium to use to make your cells. So... I guess that's about it for this one. Um, if you have any questions on this, either send me a comment on Twitter or leave me a comment on YouTube, whichever you choose. And I'll answer the best I can. I'll see what I can do to get Axel to come on and give us a more uh, educated reactor probably go over to his place and look at his design because he's got a massive design and next episode we'll probably build the uh, fluid one I haven't decided yet where I'm going to put it. I might put it up here on the roof next to this one. I'm not sure. Setting it up is a lot more work than this one. This one is just placing the blocks. That one you got to, we got to have more machines. Got to have the generator and the liquid heat exchanger and all that good stuff and then once we get a lot of heat coming out of it then we can try to set it up to uh, run steam again so that's it take it easy have a good one see you in the next